A few months ago, EBL contacted me and asked me if I'd be willing to test their 200 watt solar panel, which I have here. Now you may have seen my review last fall of the EBL 1000 watt hour portable power station, which I sometimes use to power my astronomy gear when I'm out in the field away from AC power and doing astrophotography, which I'm doing over the next few days. When you're away from home and you don't have access to AC power, how do you recharge these portable power stations? Well, the answer is with these portable solar panels. So I agreed to have EBL send me this panel. Other than the panel, I received no other compensation from EBL. They have no input to this review and they will see the review when I post it and you can see it at the same time. So let's go through the basics of their 200 watt panel. One of the things that really attracted me to this panel is the price, which is true of all of the EBL products. This 200 watt panel sells for $249 with coupon. So $249 is an excellent price for a 200 watt panel. Now EBL also makes a 100 watt panel which costs $149. So as you can see at $249 for 200 watts, that's less than the price of two of these. Now this panel is about twice as heavy at 18.8 pounds compared to 9.8 pounds. But frankly, you see the size difference is not all that big. The 100 watt panel is actually wider than the 200 watt panel. So all in all, they have a nice compact package in the 200 watt panel. Now, they use monocrystalline solar cells, pretty much like most others, and they claim an efficiency of about up to 23.5%. But we're gonna test this out and see how fast it actually charges things. It charges at 19.8 volts and 10 amps. So that's 198 uh, watts, just about 200 watts. Now, the folded dimension of this is 25, 0.3 by 20.9 by 2.2 inches thick. So when you open this up and it has little clasps to help keep it folded shut, it opens up into four panels and the total length is 94.2. The height remains the same at 20.9 and the thickness is less than an inch. And on the back side, you can see that it has these kickstands. These are nice wide kickstands. I like these kickstands on this. They're comparable to the kickstands on the Jackery. And this comes with four kickstands, one kickstand on each panel, which makes it very easy to set up and position the angle that you want. Now, all the connections are in this zippered pocket, which has become pretty standard these days on portable solar panels. And it comes with a 14 gauge wire that is 56 inches long it's terminated in MC4 connectors. So if your power station doesn't use MC4 inputs, and I haven't seen many power stations that use these, you do need an adapter. But included with the panel is this multi-pin adapter. And this has the MC4 connectors on this end. And then it has four optional adapters on this end. You have the Anderson power pole connectors here. You have the XT60 connector here. You have a DC plug, which is a 7.9 millimeter by 0.9 millimeter. And then this is an aviation plug. So the one I find most useful is this uh, Anderson power pole connector here, which can connect to the EBL 1000 watt portable power station can also connect to some of the jackeries as well. And if those don't work for you, you can always find other adapter types. Now, one improvement that I'm very happy EBL made is in how they connect the cable to the actual solar panel itself. On the 100 watt panel, there's really no solid strain relief to prevent the cable from being tugged on and perhaps being pulled loose from its connection to the solar panel. On this one, they have a really nice plastic uh, input port and you can see it's very rigidly attached to that. So this represents a really good strain relief. You're very unlikely to pull this loose by accident. 
as long as you don't abuse it. So I think that's a big improvement. They ought to do something like that on their 100 watt panel as well. Now I do need to point out that unlike the Jackery, this EBL panel does not have USB connection ports. So you cannot plug in a USB device directly to this panel to recharge it. Also, like the Jackery and pretty much most other panels, they do have a PTFE type coating on these to help keep it free from dust and dirt and allow you to wipe it off with a damp cloth. A uh, little bit of water won't hurt this, but these are not waterproof. This trip to the Lake San Antonio dark site to do astro imaging is a perfect opportunity for me to test out this 200 watt panel from EBL. And I'm going to use it to recharge this 100 amp hour battery that I was using over the last two nights to run my imaging gear. It is now depleted of all of its energy. So I will use the 200 watt panel to recharge it. And to do that, I'm gonna need this solar charge controller. This solar charge controller will handle up to 30 amps. And since the output of this panel is 10 amps, should be no problem getting the maximum energy out of the panel and into the battery. And so I'll let it run during the day. This is a nice sunny day. There are no clouds in the sky. It's middle of September. So the sun is still fairly high in the sky, although not at its peak. And I will adjust the panel every once in a while to so it's pointing in the direction of the sun. After all, I want to recharge this battery as much as possible so I have plenty of juice left for tonight's imaging runs. So we just hook up the battery first. As always, you hook the battery first and then the solar panel. After that, I'm using the Anderson power pole connectors. Tuck the battery behind the solar panel because you like to keep them in the shade. And I'm getting 10 amps, which is what this thing is rated at. So we'll leave it here during the day and I'll run it and report back what we get later today. Since it's getting late in the afternoon, the sun is getting low in the sky, I want to do an update on where we are. So after six hours of charging, we've charged the 100 amp hour battery by 60 amp hours. And that works out to be 128 watt hours per hour on average. Now we are in the middle of September, so the sun is not highest in the sky at this time of the year, but it's not also lowest in the sky. So the amount of solar radiance does vary with the season. In fact, when I did this test with this 200 watt panel using the EBL 1000 watt hour portable power station, I got a peak output of 146 watt hours uh, when the sun was highest in the sky. So when this was the middle of July, which is near the summer solstice. So 128 watt hours here, 146 peak back in July. So you can see the amount of power you get out of the panel certainly does vary with the season. So the result of the 200 watt panel is about twice the output that I've measured in the past with their 100 watt panel. So I think things are fairly consistent between the two panels. So what's the bottom line with this 200 watt panel from EBL? Well, as I showed you before, I think it's a very well designed and put together panel. Now, while any 200 watt panel is gonna be fairly large, I think they designed this to be fairly manageable in terms of the clasps that keep it shut, carrying handles, and you can see that it sets up pretty well with those four kickstands behind it. I also like the fact that they have a nice strain relief and a better cable coming out of this thing. And the multi-pin adapter is also a nice addition as well. So I like this 200 watt panel design and features better than their 100 watt panel. And for a price of 249, I think you can't really go wrong with this particular 200 watt panel. Now, I hope you learned something from this video. If you have, please like the video. That makes it easy for other folks to find it. You may wanna to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this. And I'll put links to this and their 100 watt panel along with their portable power stations 
down below the video where it says show more. So thank you for tuning in.